So have you ever wondered how the density of water can be affected by temperature and salinity? What we're going to do today is a couple of short experiments where we investigate these effects. Hi, I'm Kyle Stewart. I'm a research scientist here at the Research School of Earth Sciences at the Australian National University. What we're going to do today is a very quick demonstration that involves the density of water. For this stem box, we've got a few items, uh, mainly the food dyes. We've also got a, a funnel which we use to very carefully pour the hot and cold waters into a larger container that's clear of just room temperature water through a sponge, which is what we've got just here. We've got a nice clear uh, plastic container, any sort of plastic container, Tupperware or, or a, a Coke bottle with its label off should be okay, just so long as you can see through the sides of it and it's filled up with, with clear water, tap water at room, uh, that, that reaches room temperature. For our funnel, we're just using that to very carefully introduce the dye, the dyed water that's hot and cold into the clear water. So we're going to start by pouring, very carefully pouring in the hot water. The hot water is less dense than the room temperature water. So as we pour this water in, very carefully through the sponge, you should start to see that water spreading out across the surface of the clear water. This is because it wants to stay at the top because it's less dense than the clearer water, the room temperature water. Okay, so we've just poured the warm, the red warm water in and you can see that that's formed a layer of warm water that's sitting at the surface. It's at the surface because it's less dense than the water underneath it um, and that's because it's warm and the, the density of water is a strong function of its temperature. So now what we're going to do is introduce some cold water. We're going to do it in exactly the same way as we did the warm water um, by gently pouring it through this sponge. Now this, this sponge can be any sort of material, any sort of spongy material that you've got. We're using it to just very gently pour, introduce that water into the container um, and reduce, damp any of the momentum that might come from us pouring the water in. Now what you can see with this cold water as it's going in is that it's going straight to the bottom. When you look at it from the side, you can still make out the warm red layer, which is still less dense than the clear water that's underneath it. And then you can also make out the cold water, the blue water that we've poured in as well. And that's the water that's gone to the bottom of the tank. Now the reason why that layer is much, much thicker than this layer is because as it was falling through the ambient water through the through the clear water there was a lot of mixing and turbulence that you probably saw and so it's actually already mixed with a lot of the rest of the of the fluid that's in there. So I've just seen what the effect of temperature can have on the density of water. Now what we're going to do is investigate the effect of salinity on the density of water. For this we're going to need a couple more ingredients. I'm just going to pour a little bit of room temperature water in and we're going to put some a different color food coloring in. And most importantly, we're going to put some salt in. So for this, I'm just going to use five scoops of salt in here. And we want to stir that, mix it up to dissolve all of that salt into this now yellow water. What we're going to do is in exactly the same way as we did for the temperature experiment, we're going to pour this salty water into our fresh tap water that's over here in the clear container. We're going to see where that salty water goes. So where do you think it's going to go? So now that you've had a try, let's have a go ourselves. So that salt, salty water has gone into the clear tank through the sponge and you might be able to see that it's actually settling closer to the bottom of the tank. This is because the salty water is heavier, it's more dense than the fresher water that we started with in the tank. So we've just seen the effect that salinity can have on the density of water. And we've previously seen the effect that temperature can have on the density of water. 
what we're going to do now is combine the two. To do this, what we've got is a beaker full of uh, hot water, as hot as you can get it out of the tap, but don't burn yourselves. And I'm going to put a little bit of food coloring in there to mark it as green. So that's our hot water. Now, in addition to the hot water, we're going to add just a tiny, tiny amount of salt and mix that through. So what we've seen from before is that it's hot. Because it's hot, it's going to stay up at the surface because it's lighter than the, the tap water that's at room temperature that's in the clear container. But we've just made it salty. So because it's salty, what we've seen is that it's going to go to the bottom. So the question is, where is this water going to go? So I'm going to introduce this warm and very slightly salty water into the container in the same way as what we've done before, and just pouring it very gently through the sponge. So what you should be able to see is that the, the warm water, the warm, slightly salty green water, is entering into the clear container through the sponge and remaining up at the surface. That tells us that this warm water is uh, less dense than the clear water that's in the container. It's less dense because this water is warmer. But remember that it's also slightly salty. As the warm water is residing in the container up at the surface, it's losing its heat to the lab. The process by which this warm water loses its heat to the lab and leaves behind slightly salty, denser water, that starts to sink and that sinks, sinks in these tiny little structures that are called salt fingers. This is the residual salt that's being left behind as the, as the warm, salty water is losing its heat anomaly. These sink and you can see them sinking through the, the ambient water here. The structure, the, the shape of these salt fingers is very distinctive uh, and it comes about as a uh, result of the warm, salty water losing its heat faster than it's able to lose its salt. The density of the ocean is very much a strong function of its temperature and its salinity, which we've seen in our simple experiment uh, can have the, the effect of temperature and salinity can have some quite remarkable consequences on the dynamics of the system. So as, as climate is changing, ice caps are gradually losing more and more mass. The oceans around the uh, high latitudes will start to become fresher. This has an effect of capping the surface of the ocean so that we're actually starting to prevent the uh, structures, some of the, the processes that we saw here. So there we have the density of water being a function of its temperature and its salinity. And when the two combine, you end up with some very beautiful and very amazing features and perhaps unexpected dynamics. <laughs>